It's a sunny Saturday morning in Cheney, Roos Field, the Inferno at Eastern Washington University, where today it's the first of four games in the WIAA Kickoff Classic. It's a 2B battle between the Tico Oaksdale Roselia Nighthawks and the Reardon Indians. A little breezy, but a great day here in Cheney. Welcome, everybody. I'm Larry Weir along with Bill Ames. We start the day today, Bill, with a 2B battle. Tico Oaksdale Roselia taking on Reardon, and this is a battle of experience versus inexperience here in their first game of the season. Well, well, Larry, a great day for football, by the way. I've been looking forward to this day for quite some time. Four great games, kicking it off with Tico Oaksdale and Reardon. And as you said, Tico Oaksdale bringing a lot of experience, a lot of starters back from last year. And so this event, probably not going to be too much for them. On the other hand, Reardon, a lot of youth, but a lot of potential. Eric Nicola, head coach at uh, Reardon, told me earlier that you know he expects a lot of things out of this team, but he's not sure what he's going to get out of them today because of that youth. Both these ball clubs play in very tough leagues. Tico Oaksdale, Roselia, part of the Southeast 2B. Reardon, part of the Northeast 2B. Should be a great game today. The first of four. A lot of football coming up here throughout the day. And we hope you join us for all these ball games. We go from the 2B level all the way up to 4A here today. The kickoff is the Nighthawks take on the Indians. That's next here on SWX. This kickoff is sponsored by Kimmel Athletics. Stop in and see the latest in football shoes and equipment at Kimmel Athletic. Bill, we're here in Cheney this year as opposed to Spokane or as opposed to Seattle uh, because of some construction going on. Well, you know, the University of Washington uh, with, the, with the construction of the new stadium, which will be ready for next football season. Uh, because of that, the University of Washington playing their home opener uh, at, uh, at Quest Field. And that's typically where th these games would be. So the WIAA decided to bring it over onto this side of the mountains. And, uh, and we're fortunate they did. We're looking forward to some great football. Nighthawks in the white receive the opening kickoff. And they take it out to about the 40-yard line. And that's where Tico Oaksdale Rosalia will start the first possession of the ball game with their uh, offensive unit. And this is a very experienced squad led by their quarterback, uh, number 21, Ryan Maley. You see him there in the center of the picture, a returning starter, just a junior. He's a good athlete. Uh, yeah, just a junior. And, and we talk about the experience of Tico Oaksdale, but they're awfully young as well. Only five seniors on this club, mainly uh, only a junior, as you said, and a good athlete. They run out of the pistol formation with the running back behind the quarterback. And this is uh, Maley pitching it to Stephen Maley, and he's got some open room across the 45 of Reardon and down out of bounds at the 39. That's going to be a pickup of 21 yards, running the little reverse option there. Ryan Maley pitches to Stephen Maley, and it's a huge play, Bill. Well, nice job on first down there. little misdirection. You get that defense a uh, little amped up. 
trying to uh, to make a big play early and easily get out of position when that happens. And uh, the Wildcats or the Nighthawks, excuse me, take a take advantage of it. So first and ten, Nighthawks down at the 39 of Reardon. And the snap hit the quarterback in the chest. He was trying to point something out to the line, and the line thought the center thought he was uh, calling the snap count, and the ball hit Maley right in the chest. But he falls on it at the 41. Flags are down as well. Yeah, it's the uh, first game jitters trying to. Trying to get the snap count underway. You practice it so much over the summer and then again in fall camp, but nothing like being out here in the game situation going against another team for the first time. And, you know, nerves uh, got the better of, uh, I think, the center on that one. Now well, let's see whether this is a dead ball foul in the play. Uh, yeah, it's an illegal uh, motion play. Yeah, I think they actually had one of their slot backs was, wasn't sure if they needed to come in motion or not. So as he was kind of creeping towards his quarterback, that's when the ball was ball was snapped and uh, yet other players moving as well i'm wondering if they had any uh, option at declining that penalty because the play was a loss of two would have advanced the down instead it's first and 15 now for the nighthawks from the indian 44 and again lots of movement with no snap of the ball that time and so we'll have another five go against the nighthawks well we went from snapping it too early to uh to not snapping it at all <laughs> And, uh, again, just first game jitters. These kids are excited. And uh, you gotta got to get focused quickly here. Uh, it's early. You know, that's something we haven't talked much about. These teams aren't used to playing at 10 o'clock in the morning, maybe practicing, but they're not going to have any 10 o'clock games here the rest of the season. Nope. It's uh, first game of the year, some jitters. These kids don't play on turf, especially red turf. As you see, Caleb Madison, the Nighthawk head coach, in his second year, he returns a ton of starters. This is a very experienced ball club here. There's a little misdirection again. A player lost a helmet, and Reardon with a good job at making the tackle that time, as uh, that was Craig Nelson on the run that time. But he got very minimal yardage that time. Good job by the Reardon line to stack everything up. Yeah, Nelson, one of those kids that the Reardon coaching staff is certainly aware of. Saw him play quite a bit last year. Uh, one of those juniors again who uh, saw a bit of time and, and still has a, a lot of football left in him here for the Nighthawks. Yeah, this is a Tico Oaksdale Roselia squad that has a lot of starters back but still don't have a lot of seniors. Uh, they have just uh, six seniors on the roster. And it looks like they're going to come out in a throwing formation right now. Second and 19. Maley gets sacked back of the 42-yard line. Nice job defensively there for the Indians as uh, that time that was Sorcy, Nathan Sorcy, breaking through there. He's their quarterback on offense. Not a big guy, but he broke through, did a nice job. Now get used to hearing that name over the course of this game. Sorcy, as you said, Larry, the quarterback, also stalwart on defense. And after that big run, uh, Tico Oaksdale back to where they started after a couple of penalties and some backward plays. Well, they have third down and 29 yards to go for a first down. They have to take it all the way down to the 29 of Reardon, and they're at their own 42 right now. Reardon really crowding the line of scrimmage right now. You've got to be careful to not let somebody get behind you for the deep throw. And penalty flags down, probably a delay of game coming here. And that's really what set Tico Oaksdale back here, Bill, has been the, the penalties, and it... They had a little momentum going, and then the penalties have uh, kind of thrown off what they were doing. Well, it doesn't matter what level of football we're in. Last night, you and I were out at Coeur d'Alene, the West Lynn game. West Lynn moving the ball on their first drive, and one simple little penalty uh, really stopped that drive. Nelson on the run, trying to get outside. He's got yardage, not nearly enough for a first down, but he gets some field position back, and now a flag down late as we're going to have a late hit on one of the Nighthawks. I think it was Clay Shelton came in and got somebody uh, late, but that was a nice run by Nelson. Would have set him in a 4th and 10 situation, maybe given him a chance to go for it, but instead we're going to have a penalty that will knock him back 15. Yeah, I think that's going to be a dead ball foul, so it will remain 4th down, and certainly no, no point in going for it. They're going to have to punt, and you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of nervous energy right now for Tico Oaksdale. Yeah, that's their fourth penalty already in the ball game. And so that'll be 15 yards from the end of the run. It would have been fourth and 10 at the Reardon 39, but instead they're going to walk that back across midfield again. As Bill said, it is a dead ball foul, and so the down will advance. It'll be fourth down. They'll mark it uh, back at the 49-yard line, so it'll be fourth down and 22. But you can see that the Nighthawks have some explosion on offense. They can get outside mm -hmm. with that speed of Nelson and, and cause some problems for Reardon. So really self-inflicted here, Larry, on this first drive for Tico Oaksdale. Micah Pitsley, I believe, will be the punter here, number 10 for the Nighthawks. And Reardon has a single safety back at about the 20-yard line. Well, actually, it'll be... 
There you see Sorcy back deep to receive. Here's the punt. It was Corey Brown punting. It hits at the 25, and Sorcy grabs it at the 18. He's up over the 25-yard line. Flags are down again. And the Indians will take over at their 26-yard line, uh, depending what's going on with the penalty. I think I saw a face mask down there on the return. So early on, multiple penalties here for Tico Oaksdale if this, uh, if this does, in fact, go against the Nighthawks. That would be their fifth early penalty here. By the way, you're able to watch this game on SWX in uh, the eastern Washington, northern Idaho, throughout the region on cable systems, throughout eastern Washington, north Idaho, but also worldwide on the Internet on the WIAA website. So we'd like to welcome everybody uh, watching uh, wherever they happen to be on the Internet here today. I was talking to Eric Nicola, head coach at Reardon, uh, this summer, and I asked him, you know, are your kids, do you think your kids are going to be nervous by the fact that this game is going to be on television? He said, look, we don't, our kids don't spend a lot of time watching television. They're usually outdoors hunting or fishing or doing things like that. So we haven't talked a lot about it, and we hope that they don't even recognize that there's cameras out there so that it doesn't uh, become one more thing to distract them. 15-yard face mask penalty. You're exactly right, Bill, with uh, uh, you thought you saw the face mask, and you did. The old eagle eyes. We'll see how well they're working tonight about 8 p.m. when you're out here for the fourth game. You might be seeing three or four face masks. Well, you're going to be deserting me, I know, after the second <laughs> game, but I fully expect that you'll be calling me and just to make sure that I'm still awake. I think the level of football we're going to see later on today is going to be plenty to to keep the juices flowing because we've got a couple of great games here uh, throughout, or three more games after this one over the course of the day featuring some, some really good teams. Play-by-play -play guys aren't as tough as the analysts. We, uh, we're only good for two games at a time. Here's a little wishbone set and a run on first down for the Indians and a nice job up over the 45-yard line as that was Charlie Eldred, 160-pound senior, taking the ball up there and getting six yards there on first down. Yeah, Eldred's going to be one of those guys to watch. One of the four seniors on this Reardon team, both he and Sorcy, going to get most of the carries uh, with the ball. And you can see there, big, strong kid. Uh, 5'8", 160, actually looks bigger than that and, and moves well, ran through some tackles. Something you don't see a whole lot in high school football anymore is that wishbone set. No wide receivers. Everybody's in tight. Here's the run off the left side this time. It's Jeff Bergeron, 175-pound junior. He'll be short of the first down by a couple of yards. It'll be third down for the Indians. And they've got some skill. Sorcy can throw the ball, and they've got some guys on the outside who can catch it. And so it's the one thing that Tico Oaksdale will have to be prepared for. Reardon not known for a lot of passing uh, in their history, but with Sorcy, uh, he can certainly fl fling it out there if he needs to. Third down and two for the Indians. Everybody in tight, what they would call inside the box. You've pretty much got all 22 guys within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage. Here's another run, nothing doing. As there wasn't a whole lot of deception there, the Nighthawks were coming hard, and a big loss on the play back to the, actually only a loss of a yard on the play back to the 47. Let's see what the Indians do now, Bill, on fourth and three. Well, yeah, just a couple of substitutions. But there aren't a lot of kids to begin with, and it looks like it might be Sorcy who's going to drop back in the punting formation. Great job there by the Nighthawks on third down. Really blew up that line of scrimmage. Nowhere to go for the runner. And number five was Craig Nelson. Number 82, Max Mueller. Two of the Nighthawks in on that uh, play. So here's Sorcy for the punt. High kick downfield. And this is going to hit at the 34 and bounce back to the return man at the 28-yard uh, line, running laterally and getting outside that time. This is Stephen Maley. Up the sidelines he goes now over the 45 and down to the 43 of Reardon. So a nice job by Maley on the return, getting well over 20 yards, close to 30 yards on that return, and sets the Nighthawks up in good field position. Well, you know, that never happens if he doesn't go ahead and catch that ball off the bounce. A lot of kids will make the mistake to let that thing go, thinking that they don't want to make a mistake and, and fumble it. He got right in front of the ball, bounced right up to him, and he was able to take off so a great decision number one to field that punt and he got some good blocks but the Nighthawks again showing their speed they seem to have a speed advantage here just in the early going from what we're able to see yeah it looks like they're running downhill they go out of the pistol formation with running backs behind the quarterback kind of looks like the shotgun but the quarterback's closer to the line of scrimmage and here's another run this is Nelson and he may go he's over the 25 and he's spilled down near the 20-yard line. A nice job over there by Reardon to get over and save that touchdown by Sorcy, the quarterback, number 12. But Nelson, again, with another big run of close to 20 yards. Yeah, once again, Craig Nelson uh, doing some damage 
for this offense of the Nighthawks. The referee is going to be the umpire there. Did a nice job to kind of set a pick for him. Hey, take advantage of who you can out there. Use the official. Use your own man, whatever it takes. So Ryan Maley, the quarterback. It's first and ten now from the Indian 20. A lot of misdirection from these Nighthawks. Here goes uh, Maley again, Stephen Maley, down to the 15-yard line for another five-yard gain. But we've seen the reverse option. We've seen lots of counter-type stuff. They, they really do that getting the better of that front line of Reardon right now. They're, they're getting caught up watching the backfield instead of watching their keys of the offensive line. And when you get caught getting your eyes in the backfield, you get out of position, and that's what Tico Oaksdale is counting on to be able to pull off some of these big runs. Tough for a young team, all that misdirection, I'm sure. It really is, yeah. And for an experienced team, they're, uh, they're used to it. Here's another run, and this is going to be a touchdown for the Nighthawks. Again, that speed to the outside. It's Clay Shelton, a junior. Number 22 there that takes it in for the score, and the Nighthawks are on top first here in the first quarter. Well, just a, you know, no, no real misdirection there, just a simple handoff, and then the speed of Shelton to get around the corner. Lack of contain there by Reardon allowed Tico Oaksdale to, uh, to get to the outside, and then it was just a race to the pylon, and a nice job by Shelton to be the first one there. No extra point kick here. It's a two-point conversion try for the Nighthawks. And they hand it off to Nelson, and up the middle he goes for the two-point conversion for Tico Oaksdale Rosalia. So the Nighthawks get the ball in good field position after a nice punt return by Steve Maley, and they take it on down the field and take it in for the score on the touchdown run, and they lead it by the score of 8 to nothing. as you see the misdirection here. Now, there's the uh, touchdown run right there by Clay Shelton, 8 nothing Nighthawks. The WIAA Kickoff Classic is brought to you by Kimmel Athletics. Stop in and see the latest in football shoes and equipment. A three-play, 43-yard drive, Bill, and and uh, they're really, here you see this pistol formation. Well, yeah, and again, it's the deception that really causes problems for the defense. You, you will see all of the action in the backfield, and the problem is those linemen, they get put out of position, and the speed of Tico Oaksdale can take some real advantage of that. So it's not so much the, the, the power and the speed that gets you, it's that deception, and that's what Tico Oaksdale's done such a good job of, really, Larry, in both drives, that first one, really got, you know, they got them in their own way more than anything else. They've had uh, really no problems as long as they can keep the flags off the field. Short kickoff was muffed but recovered by the Indians, so they take over with pretty good field position here at their own 33. And let's see if they uh, uh, start running a little option off that wishbone. They pretty much just pounded in in the middle of that first drive. Let's see if they try to get outside. Now we see a wide receiver, a couple of them actually, and Sorcy, who was the quarterback, is now a, a wide receiver there at the bo- at the uh, near the formation. And here's a little toss sweep and a run, and they're going to get about four yards on that run. Charlie Eldred on the carry. So already we saw a little change in what Reardon was doing. Instead of the wishbone, they kind of spread things out a little bit. Yeah, they're not afraid to mix it up. I mean, Coach Nicola is a guy who, who will try different things on offense, and even if it means taking his uh, regular quarterback and putting him into another spot, 
Uh, and again, they can throw the ball. So trying to, uh, to find out early here what, uh, what's going to be their best route of getting down the field. Number 42, Mac Chilson is now the quarterback. And they're back into the wishbone again, but they do have a wide receiver. And the Nighthawks offside. Yet another penalty. As that time it was number 10, Micah Pitsley, starting linebacker, who jumped into the neutral zone. Already the sixth penalty on the Nighthawks here in the first quarter. Yeah, nice job there of changing up the snap count a little bit there. Drew Pitsley offside. Now you can take yards any way you can get them at this point. Real manageable now, second down with just a yard to go. Second down, a yard. Pitsley, one of the few seniors on this Nighthawk team. They were 4-0 last year in the non-league games, and then they got into their league, which is a stiff league, and uh, they went 1-4, and four, but they returned almost all their starters off of last year's ball club, and they look to contend this year in that Southeast 2B. There's uh, Pitts, or rather uh, uh, Chilson back in there, a quarterback. He fumbled the snap, and there's a rugby scrum going on for the ball. And I think Reardon's going to be able to retain possession. No gain on the play, basically. So it'll be third down and one still. Now, the most basic part of offense, getting that center exchange, quarterback exchange figured out. And, you know, they, they've had plenty of opportunity to practice it, although the surface here is a little bit different than what they're accustomed to practicing out there at the, at the grass fields of Reardon High School. So third down and a yard for the Indians. There's a good power run that time for the first down. They take it out to about the 33-yard line. I think it was Hoskins on the carry. Nope, check that. It was uh, Jeff Bergeron again on the carry, and he gets the first down of three yards. Well, he was stopped initially, as you saw, but uh, some great running there. Just drove those legs uh, after the initial contact, and anytime you do that, you got a good chance to at least fall forward for a yard, which is all he needed. Sorcy back in there at quarterback now with Chilson operating as the fullback. Out of the wishbone. The quarterback and the left halfback ran together. They did the fake inside, and then the quarterback and the left halfback ran into each other, and that play was blown up at that point. That's a loss of about three yards. Well, you can see that they're trying to do the misdirection as well, or the Reardon Indians. The problem is it's just not as, it's not as cohesive as what you're seeing out of Tico Oaksdale. And as you said, Larry, running into each other in the backfield, you have no chance of doing anything uh, too great if you can't uh, stay out of each other's way there. So they're going to have to clean this up and, and, uh, and uh, get a little bit more efficient with this, uh, with this running game. Sorcy, the quarterback, and Eldred, the left halfback, bumping into each other there. And here's uh, Eldred, I believe, on the run this time. And he gets maybe a yard on the play, and that's it. And it's going to be they tried to go a little bit outside there. They really haven't tried to, to probe what's going on on the flanks yet. Tried to get outside a little bit there, and they gained a couple of yards. Yeah, I mean, up front right now, it's all been Tico Oaksdale on both sides of the ball. Really, you haven't have, have not had any big holes. Most of the, the longer runs for Reardon have come just off of second effort and good tough running by those running backs. So up front, uh, Reardon struggling right now to get anything going, and, and now you, you get to another situation where you're going to split somebody out wide for Reardon, possibly looking at throwing the ball for the first time. Third and 12. And a Nighthawk in the neutral zone once again. Micah Pitsley coming on the blitz, the linebacker. And he could not anticipate the snap count. So instead of third and about 11, you're going to have third and six now. And that opens the playbook up a little bit more. I think Pitsley, I hope for this young man's sake that he's a two-way player, plays on special teams and never comes off the field. Because if he does, I'm sure somebody's going to be trying to talk to him about the importance <laughs> of staying on your side of the ball. That time, it was just he just got over anxious. I don't think it had anything to do with the snap count. He's just trying to you know, get up there and, and put pressure on. But you've got to stay disciplined and watch that football. Ball. So third and a long six now as the Indians are just short of their own 49-yard line. And now they move in the backfield. The fullback started early. We're going to get a rugby scrum that's going to push the ball for the first down, but we're going to have a, a penalty here on Reardon for a false start, and that'll cost them the five yards they just got. Yeah, they just uh, you know had two guys going at the same time. The fullback crept forward while the other man's in motion, and you, you got to go ahead and get try to get yourself set if you're going to do that. You see the fullback there still with hanging his head. Yeah, you had the fullback moving forward, and he had the motion man coming around, so that's an illegal shift. It's legal in Canada, yeah, but, but not here. <laughs> and, or in arena football. Or arena football, that's true. 
So third and 11 again for Reardon back at their own 44. Sorcy the quarterback. Not a lot going for him there. He's going to get maybe a yard on the play. That's it. So it'll be fourth down. And the Indians will probably have to punt. That almost looked like a broken play. Well, I think they tried to get a little bit of an option play coming off of there with, uh, with Eldred coming around to, uh, to perhaps take the option. And the problem was, again, just great penetration by Tico Oaksdale and nowhere for Sorcy to go with the ball. Maley had a 29-yard punt return. He's the deep man as Sorcy. There you see him. One of four seniors on this Reardon team. Had a 25-yard punt last time. Gets a good foot into this one. Maley from the 27-yard line. Trying to get outside. And a nice job there to grab the jersey and throw him down by number 70 for Reardon. Tyler Johnson, just a sophomore, 215-pounder, a big kid. Did a good job. Strong kid. Grabbed him by the jersey. Tossed him down after a 10-yard return. Well, Johnson uh, you know, got down there and, and really bailed his guys out because you saw Reardon fly in there. Somebody's got to keep that outside contained. And uh, Johnson... If not for Johnson, that thing could have gone uh, all the way to the end zone. You're going to take a look at it here on the return. Again, Reardon coming in and, and really crashing in on that defender or on that return man. But uh, if you do that and he gets outside of you, there's nobody there to help. Fortunately, Johnson made a great athletic play. Yeah, he will fight off the block there of number 11, Zane Brown, and make a nice tackle on that play. So here come the Nighthawks one more time. Maley wants to throw the ball. Fires it over the middle, and it's intercepted. Taken away by Eldred, and the first turnover of the ball game gives the Nighthawks, or rather the Indians, the ball at the Nighthawk 49-yard line. Well, this might be why Tico Oaksdale likes to run the football because trying to get back there and throwing it, you know, he had really no time to throw, got into a bailout situation. We're going to take a look at it again here. Great job by Reardon to get pressure and coverage down the field, and then he just ran out of space probably would have been better off just to throw this one in the ground try to make a play there and you know a lot of times when you do that turns into an interception so big defensive stand for Reardon trying to get back into this game and I'll correct myself there was Mac Chilson on the interception the senior rather than Eldred and so here come the uh, Indians first and 10 at the Nighthawk 49 Sorcy will hand it and I think this is uh, Eldred this time around on the run it is number 44 for the uh, Indians and a gain of five yards there, or four yards actually, they're on first down. Again, just great tough running there by Eldred. Uh, young man is, uh, is going to feel it later on tonight uh, with all of the carries he's gotten here so far, but good strong running. Again, not a lot of open room for him to run, but just you know, getting his head down and, and bowling through, and that's what, uh, that's what this running game has been all about here in the first quarter for Reardon. Might be the last play of the quarter coming up. You can see the clock ticking down there at about 10 seconds remaining here in quarter number one. Another run with Eldred, short of a first down. He gets a couple more yards. It'll bring up a third and four situation for the Indians as we're done with one in the first game of four today in the WIA kickoff classic from Roosefield in Cheney at Eastern Washington University. Nighthawks eight, Indians nothing. Back with quarter number two next here on SWX.
The WIAA Kickoff Classic on SWX is brought to you by Sun Rental in Colville. Sun Rental, we rent everything under the sun. 8 nothing Nighthawks after one quarter of play. Well, a big down coming up here for Reardon early in this game. Third down, four to go, probably in four down territory. So you wonder if Coach Eric Nicola may have gotten two plays called there in between quarters in case they don't make it on this third down attempt. Third down and four, a little toss sweep. And that's going to be a first down run trying to tiptoe down the sideline still on his feet down near the 10 yard line a nice run that time by Charlie Eldred doing his uh, impersonation of a tightrope walker down the sidelines not a tightrope walker a tightrope runner and did a pretty good job all the way down to the Nighthawk 13 well we saw a lot of tough running out of Eldred in that first quarter here it's all about the speed a nice little quick flip out there getting the lineman out there and great speed there by Eldred to get around that corner I thought some of those defenders had a nice angle on him to get him down, but Eldred able to elude them. And as you said, a little ballerina act down there on that sideline. First time they've really tried to probe the, the, the flanks and try to get outside. First and 10 from the 13 for the Indians. Bergeron. Not much there. Nighthawks doing a good job to stack that up. So I would be an awful football coach, Larry. But you know why? Because... After seeing what Elder did on that little toss sweep getting around in, I would just keep coming back to it over and over and over again until they prove you can stop it. Here, Reardon just goes right back up into the gut, right into the teeth of that defense of Tico Oaksdale and, and sees and gets the same result that we've seen. Uh, you wonder if uh, perhaps they're not going to try to press those corners a little bit more after the su success of that first play of the second quarter. We talked about in the first quarter, you see everybody is grouped within about 10 yards there, and so... Uh, it's going to be really tough to run the ball between the tackles, I would think, with everybody kind of grouped in there tight as they get another run of a couple of yards. But they are in four-down territory here. It'll be third down and about eight. And you've yet to see Sorcy throw the football. This might not be a bad opportunity, bad time to do that here with, uh, you know, it looks like third down and about eight. Through one quarter, the Nighthawks had 78 yards of uh, offense. The Indians had 19 Reardon, though, has dominated time of possession about 2-1 to one here in the first quarter. And they have uh, possession again here, third and eight at the Tico Oaksdale Roselia 11. Sorcy, again, a little miscommunication it looked like there. And he kind of ran into Bergeron and then decided to duck in there and takes it to the 10. It'll be fourth and seven. You know, it didn't look like Bergeron got through the hole as quickly as Sorcy might have thought. It almost worked out, though, well, for Sorcy. Sorcy uh, decided to take it himself, and Bergeron became... Uh, not so much a lead blocker, but a, but a pusher of sorts, getting in behind and trying to push him uh, for a few more yards. There you see Coach Eric Nicola. He's been at Reardon for over 20 years. And Reardon's got a, a great history of football. If you go back several years, you've got Coach Dan Graham, who was there as a Hall of Fame coach. Gene Smith was there as a Hall of Fame coach. And now it's Coach Nicola who's been around for a long time. But both of these squads... Uh, have tremendous athletic history in all sports. Well, the, the, the community really uh, does a great job of supporting these athletic programs. You go, to, you go to games out there on a Friday night, you see a, a ton of people out there supporting these kids, and, and uh, you know, kids look forward to, to playing athletics at these high schools because of the type of people that, that are, they're surrounded by, these coaches and administrators. And, you know, Eric Nicola at Reardon does a great job, has been out there for a, a lot of years, also serves as the athletic director at Reardon High School. So uh, they keep him pretty busy out there. Reardon still uh, on their own, uh, so to speak. But uh, we uh, initially, Tico, Wokesdale, Roselia, uh, about 25, 30 years ago, were all on their own. But uh, with small towns shrinking, uh, they have uh, became Tico, Wokesdale, and now Tico, Wokesdale, Rosalia. Here in uh, football. So here, fourth down and seven. A little quarterback draw. Sorcy is going to be stopped short, it looks like. He needed to get down to the three-yard line. And the Nighthawks able to stiffen at the five and stop him there. So it'll be a turnover on downs. But at least Reardon got the field position flipped here. And the Nighthawks are going to have to drive 95. Well, you know, a good idea here by Reardon to try to spread out Tico Oaksdale and, and see if they can't find a hole there in the middle. Sorcy might have held that ball just a touch longer to try to really sell the pass and get those uh, linebackers to, to, uh, to break out and create more of an opening. As it was, he went a little too soon, and those linebackers reacted nicely to keep him from getting that first down. Well, down went the referee. You can't see him in the 
I don't know what the heck happened to him there. You can't see him in the picture. As we have flags all over the place. But I just happened to look and I saw the referee at the E at the Eastern at the Eastern down there in the uh, sidelines. The guy in the white hat there and he was on his back. There might be a little bit of a seam there. Uh, <laughs> a seam there at the E that uh, caused the trip and that's one of those where, you know, as an official, you never want people to know who you are. In this case, that's especially true. Yeah, you uh, don't want the, 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 the video evidence. That's right. That was out of the camera angle. So if you're going to fall down, nice job. And there he, uh, he was down there uh, poking at you. We, again, we didn't have the, the camera on it, but he was down there poking around, and I think he did catch a seam or something, and, and down he went. Nelson. To the 14-yard line. He'll be a yard short of a first down. It was a procedure call on Tika Wokesdale that cost him half the distance to the goal, but they take it from the 3 out to the 11 for a pickup, or 3 of the 14, rather, for a pickup of 11. And there you see Craig Nelson, the junior. Yeah, Nelson does a good job running the ball, and, and what they're doing uh, with a lot of their successful running attempts is getting to the outside. We saw Reardon have, uh, have some success on that last drive, and that's pretty much what Tico Oaksdale is uh, is lived off of here uh, in this game is is hitting those outside corners with Nelson and utilizing that speed. Second down and one for the Nighthawks. Another big opening there across the 15 yard line. He'll get up to about the 18. That's Stephen Maley, the junior running back, number 33. There picks up four more yards and a. Another Nighthawk first down as they get out from the shadow of their own goalposts here. Yeah, more, more dis misdirection uh, for Tico Oaksdale. The Nighthawks doing a, a good job there, really confusing this front four for, uh, for Reardon, getting them out of position. One of the things that those defensive coaches for Reardon are going to want to talk about at halftime is uh, to really maintain their gaps and not get their eyes in the backfield. First and ten, Nighthawks. Give it to the third man through. Maley again, and the Indians doing a nice job to bottle that play up, and that's going to be a loss of close to four yards on that one. And that's exactly what I'm talking about, Larry. You see that those linemen are, are trying to block to the left, trying to create a seam to the left, and that's what you want to pay attention to. You don't want to watch all of that action in the backfield because that will just confuse you. Watch and see where the linemen are going. The line will tell you where that play is, is supposed to be run. Big number 70, Tyler Johnson, helped blow that one up for the Indians. Second down, 13 now for the Nighthawks at their own 16. Power eye formation that time, and nothing doing as Eldred broke through there and hits the running back for another loss. So the first time we have seen the Nighthawks quarterback under center with three men in the backfield that time, and the power eye wasn't too powerful. Well, really the first time that we've seen Reardon have any kind of success getting uh, getting some penetration with this front, and, and Eldred there from the linebacker position just knifing through. Noticed here these last couple of running plays that Reardon has decided to put a few more guys in the box, try to disrupt things before Nelson and, and others can get to the outside. There's some danger to that, though, isn't there, because of the speed of Reardon, or of Tico Oxdale, Roselia, rather? Well, yeah, you got to, you gotta, first of all, you got to make sure that if you're going to get through there, you got to get your eyes up and, and get to that ball carry right away, because if he is able to break to the outside, you don't have any kind of help. The other thing that uh, would concern you is that if that quarterback decides to hold on to the ball, then run some kind of a bootleg, and you have an open receiver downfield. So you got to be, you got to, you got got to pick your spots with that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, Reardon, these coaches have been around a long time. I'm sure they know when to run it with these kids and when not to. The Indians, part of the uh, Northeast B League that includes Colfax, a, a, a traditional power in the state, Lind Ritzville, Sprague, Kettle Falls, Davenport, Springdale, and Liberty, all in the league. And Reardon last year, a third-place finisher in the league at 4-2. and two. Behind Colfax, the number one team, and Lind Ritzville Sprague, number two. Yeah, a lot of these juniors from this year were forced into action last year as sophomores, and that was a tough duty for those young men. There goes Nelson again, and it's a foot race. He's at midfield at the 40, the 30, the 20. They won't catch him at the 10. It's a touchdown for the Nighthawks. Craig Nelson, that's 86 yards for the score. And the Nighthawks take a 14 to nothing lead. Boy, third down and 15. Reardon uh, had done such a nice job of, of getting that penetration, Larry, and you called it. If you can't make tackles, if you don't wrap them up, 
when you try to bring guys inside, you don't have a lot of help to the outside, and that's exactly what happened. Nelson broke a couple of tackles, nobody back there to stop him, and then he just turned on the burners and ran away from guys all the way to the end zone. The Nighthawks don't have a kicker, so they go for two once again. They were successful the first time around on a run by Nelson. Maley, the quarterback, hands it off. This is Maley, Stephen Maley, who takes it in for the two-point conversion. So Tico Oaksdale with a couple of big plays, a 15-yard run by Clay Shelton and a 86-yard run by Craig Nelson. And they convert the two-point conversion once again, and the Nighthawks have taken a 16 to nothing lead as we get another look at this big touchdown run. Well, you're going to see it here again. Just a simple toss. You get a little penetration, but the problem is, is you don't get, you don't get the, the guys to come through and finish the play the way that you need to, like we had talked about. And then he's off to the races and running away from guys. Reardon had done such a nice job, Larry, of, of getting that penetration and finishing plays. Just uh, wrong place, wrong time on that third down and long of uh, get, being able to get off the field. He broke three tackles there at about the 10-yard mark, and once he did that, it was Katie bar the door because he had more speed than anybody else. Uh, number 12, Sorcy, was trying to chase him down for, uh, for Reardon but couldn't catch him. Well, you see a winded young man right there in Nelson. Yeah, he better get his breath quickly because they're going to need him back out there on defense just the yep. way they do things at this level of football, which is great for these kids. I mean, if you want to... If you want to never come off the field, boy, play in the 2B because those, uh, these guys get a chance to play a lot, and uh, you've got to be in good shape. I'm sure they do a fair amount of running in the offseason. I'm sure they do, and these are farm boys, you know, a lot of them anyway, and so they're, uh, you know, buck and hay. And they're going to hunting school from what we understand. Going to hunting school. And Nicola was talking about, you know, how to – practices look he says look i gotta schedule my practice around hunting school i gotta make sure that i get my 10 <laughs> practices in because these guys their parents they take that hunting school pretty seriously we can't uh, we can't be messing around with, with hunting school boy they take the uh, kick off and return it up over the 40 yard line to the indians uh, mac chilson on the return they have good field position up at the 43 yard line and so the indians needing a touchdown to uh, get back into this one trailing 16 to nothing we'll see what they can do here on first and 10 at their own 43. Well, they've had their chances, Larry. I mean, they've gotten down there close. They just haven't been able to knock, you know, get it in there. But, uh, you know, Reardon now has to get this thing into the end zone. They've, they've gotten close, but uh, close isn't going to do it here today. Sorcy, the quarterback, out of the wishbone there. With everybody in tight, no wide receivers. Sorcy. To the 49 of Tico Oaksdale. That's going to be about an eight-yard run. That was, I don't know if there was supposed to be an option back out there with him or not. There wasn't anybody out there in a little uh, almost reverse option type thing, and they get about eight yards out of it. Well, it worked out all right for him. I mean, again, the, the speed of Sorcy and, and hitting that edge, that's what's been successful for Reardon here so far today is, is really testing the speed of the defense from Tico Oaksdale and, you know, Nice play there by the defender, but still seven yards on first down. A, a nice way to start the drive. There you see him, the senior. Again, one of only four on this Reardon team. Second and two. Eldred for a first down across the 45 down to the 44-yard line. Pick up of another five yards or so before the Nighthawks are able to knock him off his feet. Zane Brown down there, number 11 on the tackle for the Nighthawks. You know, one of the things that uh, that you've seen right now with Reardon after the second touchdown from Tico Oaksdale is a little bit of bounce in the step. I think the coaches got into him a little bit there right before kickoff and said, look, if we're going to get back in this game, we got to get a little more energy running back into the huddle, uh, you know, flying around a little bit. And you see that in these first two plays of this drive. First and 10, Indians. At the Nighthawk 44. A nice hole opens for Bergeron over the 30. Inside the 25 down to the 22-yard line. Touchdown saving tackle there made by Nelson and Brock Shelton. But that is the biggest play of the game for Reardon. Well, a little misdirection now out of this wishbone. You see two lead blockers coming up for Bergeron and a nice big hole. And then this big running back just gets it right downfield. So nothing really fancy there. You know, the, the reverse pivot by the quarterback threw that defense off just enough to create that space. And those two lead blockers did their job to allow Bergeron to get downfield. So nice job here. These first three plays for Reardon. Uh, they found something that's working. First and 10 down at the Nighthawk 22. 
Bergeron again inside the 20. A nice little power run. Got hit at about the 20-yard line and fights forward for a couple more yards to pick up a four there on first down. Yeah, that's what you love. If something worked once, try it again until they can stop you. And if you can get four or five yards on first down running the ball, you do that every time. Nice job once again by Bergeron and the guys up front. So second and six for the Indians. Trying to answer that long run by Nelson with a touchdown of their own here. And Reardon decided to stay in that little bunch formation with the wishbone. Sorcy is going to be hit for a big loss. He couldn't get the handoff there. Has a nice job done there by the Nighthawk defense. As it was uh, number 50 there, you see him in the picture, Tyler Hansen, who breaks through for the loss. Well, I'm not sure exactly what happened here, if it was a fumbled snap or, or what it was. I think possibly that fullback, that upback, Sorcy was expecting him to maybe come through the hole and ride him through, maybe even hand the ball off, but nobody there for Sorcy. And he's stuck there and takes that loss. Tyler Hansen right there, number 50, a junior for the Nighthawks. Returning starter and a starter both ways for this team. Toss sweep is fumbled. Ball loose and recovered by the Nighthawks. Yeah. At about the 26-yard line, recovered by Max Mueller, number 82, the senior defensive end. Wow, that's such a risky play there. You're throwing that ball out so wide to your to your back who split out, and, you know, it's a, it's a risk-reward. We saw it work well once before with Eldred, but here, you know, Eldred trying to watch the, the defender flying up at him and the ball coming to him at the same time and just took his eyes off of the ball. Not a great pitch, and uh, what looked to be a promising drive uh, turns it right back over to Tico Oaksdale. So the Nighthawks have it at their own 26-yard line following the Reardon turnover. First turnover of the ball game on the Indians. So the turnover is now even at one apiece. Empty backfield now. Nobody but the quarterback in the backfield for the Nighthawks. Maley with four receivers set to the left side. And again, everybody moves but the center who... Uh, Jason Brown didn't snap the ball. Number 55 there. Everybody else was going but him. Well, that's, uh, that's a rather important part of the play, and I think Brown is actually going to come over and, and talk to the coach a little bit about uh, remembering the snap count. A lot of guys throwing their arms up and, and palms up to the sky <laughs> trying to figure out why, uh, why that was such an issue. So Brown uh, might get a chance to watch a couple of plays here and uh, see how it's done. Yeah, he's out. Number 65, Lucas Engel, is in at the center position. And that's an important spot to uh, just sub in in the middle of a series like that. Especially uh, out of the shotgun here. Empty backfield again. And again, the right side of the offensive line moves. Everybody else is set. So they've got to get this snap count figured out. Well, that's the third one where, actually the fourth one, where they've had uh, you know, multiple people not be able to get the snap count figured out. Looks a lot like that first series for Tico Oaksdale. Yeah, exactly. They uh, started out with some good plays, and then I think we're hit with three straight penalties, and that really took the air out of that drive. First and 20 now. Maley off a little play fake. Pass incomplete. Led his intended receiver just a little bit too much. Brock Shelton there, number 88, senior wide receiver. So it'll be second and 20. You know, one thing we know is that Tico Oaksdale can get up a lot of yards quickly, even though they're going the wrong direction right now. Uh, the last series, uh, long third down conversion turned into a, about an 80-yard run for Nelson. So they're capable of doing it through the running game. Ryan Maley there. The junior quarterback. Not often that you see a quarterback in the 20s with his number. High snap, and that's going to result in a loss. Reardon was coming with the blitz that time, and that high snap, Maley did a nice job to catch that and keep it from going over his head. He was able to tip it up in the air. We do have flags down, and so we'll see what the penalty is all about here. But Maley, that, was a, that snap had a little mustard on it, and he did a good job of catching it. As there you see the referee say holding on the Nighthawks. Let's see if they accept that penalty or decline it. I would think they would decline it. Yeah, it looks like the Coach Nicola is going to decline the penalty, which you know they've got a, they've got quite a long ways to go as it is. Go ahead and uh, and take the down as well now, and uh, try to get a stop here on third down. So a loss on the play of about five yards, and it sets up a third down situation here, and about 24 yards for a first down, and flags are down again. Yeah, you're going to get another false start here on Tico Oaksdale. I think just uh, 
Just trying to leave a little too early, get downfield. It's going to be another five yards. Nighthawks over ten penalties here in the first uh, half of action. That's really about all you can say they've done wrong here in this one, and a lot of these are things they'll be able to clean up between game one and game two. Well, you would think so. I mean, one of the important positions, though, Larry, that you look at is that center position, and, and uh, we've had some missed snaps. We've had certainly some, some, uh, some situations where kids uh, haven't remembered the snap count, so one of the things they're going to need to do is uh, make sure that those centers uh, get a little bit more locked in. And so we've got a timeout here as uh, it's third down from the seven-yard line. They have to take it up to the 36, so it's third down and 29. So, 16-0, Nighthawks leading Reardon. Second quarter from Ruse Field in Cheney. It's the WIAA kickoff classic. It's the WIAA kickoff classic. First of four games, a 2B matchup here between Tika Wilkesdale, Rosalia, and Reardon coming up. A battle between 2A and 1A schools. 2A Colville, 1A Freeman. They were both 1A schools last year in the uh, Great Northern League, but Colville's moved up. And then we've got a 3A battle, Cheney and East Valley of Spokane, and the 4A battle to wrap up the day between Ferris and Central Valley. Here's Nelson on the top sw toss sweep, already over 100 yards rushing in the ball game, and he's going to add about eight more yards to his total, and it'll be fourth down now for the Nighthawks. Well, Tico Oaksdale went with the play that uh, they got him the long touchdown on the third down uh, the last series and thought possibly they'd catch Reardon napping again, but I think in that timeout, there was Reardon coaches probably – Probably figured something like that might be coming. So fourth down and about 21 yards now, and the Nighthawks are going to punt it. Corey Brown had a 38-yard punt the first time around. Nathan Sorcy is the uh, deep man. There's a bit of a high snap, but he brings it in. Short punt. It's going to hit at the 35 and bounce back over the 40. Still rolling over the 45. And it's going to stop right around the midfield stripe, and that's where the Indians will take over. Ends up getting a nice little roll there and close to 35 yards on that punt. So the Indians trailing 16 to nothing, take the ball back as we are uh, just past the midway point here in the second quarter of play. Well, it's really important for Reardon to be able to get some points on the board right now. They've moved the ball well. They've, they've really controlled the clock. I mean, they've had uh, dub really double the time of possession over Tico Oaksdale, uh, but they just haven't been able to get it into the end zone. So hang on to the football. You know, continue to mix things up on offense. They found something, I think, that works on those outer edges uh, with that speed. And here you see him Again, split, uh, split a receiver out wide. And yeah, this is a different formation for them, and they toss it out there, and a nice job by the Nighthawks to stuff that play. Number 22, Clay Shelton was out there and knocked down the ball carrier, Charlie Eldred, for a loss back to the 48-yard line. Now, you know, the problem with that play, if you're going to pitch it out wide, you got to make sure you can at least get a body on that defender. you got somebody lined up right over Eldred, and nobody gets blocked. You can see that uh, it was 87, Grant Blomgren for Reardon trying to get trying to get a block on that defender, but uh, certainly not physical enough to be able to, to slow him down. So second and 12 for the Indians. And again, they break the bone, as they used to call it. And they try a little misdirection there, but there was way too much penetration by the Nighthawks into the backfield, and that play was blown up back to the 44-yard line. They just dominated the front that time, and 
There was no chance of that misdirection play working. Well, penetration's one issue. The other issue, Larry, is the fact that you, you know, the timing is way off. If you're going to try to fake that sweep and bring somebody back in underneath, boy, you've got to have somebody there much sooner than that. And uh, Sorcy had to wait a couple of counts before his uh, before his runner was uh, was there for him. And that just, uh, along with the penetration, just blew everything up. The Indians had uh, good field position at the 44, at the midfield stripe to start with. Now they're back at their own 44, third and 16. And they'll throw it with flags down off the hands of Sorcy, who was the quarterback, who is now the receiver on that play. Mac Chilson was the quarterback. And the pass incomplete, but we do have flags down in the backfield, likely on Reardon here. The penalties, 10 for 67 on the Nighthawks, 1 for 5 on Reardon. And another illegal shift on Reardon when the official brings both his hands to his chest and and uh, sends him out to the side. That's an illegal, if he does one hand, it's an illegal motion, two hands, illegal shift. Legal shift twice as bad as there an you illegal go. motion. <laughs> You're going both hands. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's the same penalty, five yards, but a little more emphasis on it. Uh, yeah, again, Reardon uh, just having trouble figuring things out on offense right here in the first half. They've got a lot to talk about in the locker room at halftime. Nighthawks decline the penalty, so it'll set up a fourth down and 16 now. And Sorcy on to punt, averaging 27 and a half yards. That's a nice floating kick downfield. That's going to go down inside the 25, roll inside the 20, may bounce inside the 15. It does, and it'll roll, 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 roll down close to the 10-yard line. And so that's where the Nighthawks will take over, first down and 10. But they had a 95-yard drive earlier in this ball game. They'll have about an 89-yarder ahead of them here in this drive. Well, 2.42 to play here in the first half. Certainly enough time to be able to get the ball down there and score. And, and uh, you know, with this explosive offense and players like Nelson, uh, Reardon's got to make sure that they read their keys and not, uh, not to get too complacent here with just a couple of minutes left to go in the half. A good arm on the... Uh back judge there as they move footballs in and out. Each team gets to use their own football and so they got the Tika Wooksdale football out of there and got the re- or got the Reardon football out of there and the Tika Wooksdale ball in there and the back judge heaved it about 45 yards on the line into the uh, Reardon bench and here's a pass and a catch and a first down out to about the 27 yard line but a flag down in the backfield. Let's see it's the hold and I think that's exactly what it's going to be, and that will wipe out a 16-yard passing gain that time to number 88, Brock Shelton. Yeah, it's going to be a hold on Tico Oaksdale, and it's an unfortunate one because really a well-designed play. Uh, Maley got back there and, and got himself set, kind of floated that ball out there, took a pretty good hit as he was doing so, uh, but a nice completion, a nice uh, fancy footwork out there on the sideline as well by the receiver, but uh, all for not coming back with yet another penalty on Tico Oaksdale. They've got a They've got a season's worth of penalties going on today, partner. They have. Uh, that's number 11 now in this uh, in this ball game. So they're backed up all the way back to the four-yard line here. First and 17. With the speed this team has, though, this could be an exciting play here if they can get a little open space. Another high snap, and it's caught actually by Nelson, and then he pitches it out, and look out. They're over the 10 to the 15 to the 20. Up over the 25 near the 30-yard line, and a busted play turns into a big play for Stephen Maley as Brian Maley, the quarterback, tipped the ball up into the air. We'll see it here, Bill. It was caught by Nelson, and then... Well, yeah, I want you to watch her. First of all, the bad snap, but that thing was awfully close to being a forward lateral. Where he caught that ball was, uh, was right about even with where it came from, and... So it may have been a fortunate uh, one not to be called there, but turns into a big play uh, and a near disaster, almost uh, that ball getting loose in the end zone. Out at the 30-yard line, they'll toss it back here to Zane Brown, and a nice job to stop him in the backfield. Good play for uh, Reardon that time as Sorcy was right in there one more time. Yeah, Sorcy, great job there, just staying home and, and waiting for the runner to come to him instead of you know, running down the line with that again, looking at that action. So this senior, they're asking a lot of them here this year, both playing quarterback and on that outside, and uh, did it extremely well in that last play. Playing receiver as well at times on offense. That's his second tackle for loss. He has one sack here in the ball game. Here's a little shovel pass forward. Nelson, he gets out over the uh, 35-yard line, hanging on for dear life by a foot that time was uh, Mac Chilson. 
And they get up close to the 40, and they'll be very close, and they will have a first down. Well, great job there by the quarterback, Maley. Just hang, hung on to the ball just long enough to give Nelson a chance to come up underneath and get Reardon out of position. You know, Reardon was coming with their ears pinned back a little bit, and it got the better of them, creating that space for Nelson. They're fortunate that thing didn't go for a, a much longer play. So the Nighthawks at the 40. Clock running as we're nearing the one-minute mark here in the second quarter. Nighthawks taking a little bit of time to get this play together here. They're trying to all figure out their wristbands, and timeout is called. You could see in the picture there, everybody was looking at their wristbands trying to figure out what was being called there from the sidelines. Well, it's one of those plays they probably don't call very often in practice. They just say, hey, it's going to be number four on the wristband, and, you know, and then you're asking kids, okay, well, first of all, which wrist? Which wrist am I supposed to look at? And then once they do, they've probably got a couple of pages on that thing, and they got to find the right number. It, well, that's a lot to ask somebody to do in 25 seconds of, of a play clock. And it's a little bit different, maybe, Bill, because everybody has a wristband out there for Tico Oaksdale, and so when the play is signaled in from the bench, they're all looking, even the linemen. Yeah, I mean, that's... And that's one way to, to expand your playbook a little bit. You, you, you don't, in these first couple of weeks of camp, you don't get a chance to get through everything. So the coaches go ahead and decide uh, we'll just, you know, we'll put it on there rather than on those uh, wristbands rather than try to signal in or call it in. And, you know, it's worked out pretty well. You see a lot of teams going to it now. Tico, Oaksdale, Roselia, all big farming communities. So these, the harvest is still going on. I drove down through... Uh, uh, through Oaksdale and uh, on through Garfield and Palouse on the way to Moscow for the Eastern Idaho game on Thursday. And harvest is still in full bore out there, and a lot of these kids farm kids, so uh, they've got to try to schedule practices around farm work. And what, so that's what? one reason probably of all the penalties. They just haven't probably been able to get as many good practices in as they'd like. Well, I'll tell you one thing you don't have to worry about with any of these kids' work ethic. Nope. And Nelson, that's, uh, I think, going to be a pass. The officials have not signaled yet. That should be a forward pass, I would think. But it's going to be called a fumble. The officials are going to get together and talk about it. Yeah, it should be a forward pass. Yeah, yeah that's what it is. Good job, guys, getting together. And you'll see it here. Nelson coming up underneath again, letting time, giving time, and you know, just never had control of the ball. Yep, that was that little shovel pass forward there. And the pass incomplete. Nelson, I think, maybe was looking downfield before he got the ball in his hands there, hoping to try to get some open space. Second down and 10. Nighthawks at their own 40 here. And the snap's going to come to Nelson, who stole it from the quarterback, Maley, that time, and flags are going to blow this play dead. That was kind of a looping snap back to the quarterback. Yeah, I said the, the head referee there, he saw something, some kind of a false start before the snap came. And I'm not sure that that was the intention of the play. I think the intention might have been to get it to the quarterback and then do the handoff. But Nelson thought, it's here. I might as well go ahead and take it and run. And if not for that whistle, I think he might have had a pretty good game. Yeah, it was one of those things, I think, where it was going to get to him one way or another. And uh, he was going to get the handoff. But there was no way he was going to be able to take the handoff if he didn't go ahead and just steal the, the center snap because it was a little high. Well, by our count, that's 12 penalties now on Tico Oof. Oaksdale. So second down, 15 now. Well, now they're looking at the wristbands again. To... And now flags down because some of the linemen had their hands down and then they picked their hand up to look at their wristband. Once the lineman has his hand down, on the ground he can't take his hand up off the ground but you have to be able to get your free hand to, to see the play and that's exactly what the referee was trying to explain to him and now you've got uh jesse johnson number 54 the lineman you mentioned is trying to say something to the coaching staff but doesn't seem to be getting a lot of their attention i think tico oaksdale might be better off just to go with what's called in the huddle so now from the 30 yard line you can see them all checking their wristbands there They've got the bands on their left wrist. Those linemen put their right hand down on the ground, and then they were trying to, they had to lift up their little flap there to see the play, and once their hand is down, that's what caused that last penalty. And here's a run, Nelson again, well over 100 yards in the first half, and he takes the ball up to about the 38-yard line. The clock will run, will, barring timeouts, and it doesn't look like we'll uh, have any more uh, 
timeouts called. It was Stephen Maley on the run, actually. My mistake there rather than Nelson. But it looks like this may be the last play of the first half. This is Nelson. Short of the first down, up at about the 48-yard line. See if the Nighthawks call a timeout here to try a little Hail Mary, but it looks like they'll be happy with a 16-0 lead here at the intermission. There you see Nelson, well over 100 yards. He had the 87-yard touchdown run. And that's the end of the first half of play. So the Nighthawks have hurt themselves with penalties, but they have a couple of big plays on offense and the 16-0 lead over the Reardon Indians here at the intermission. The Indians will look to see what they can do to recap here and get back in the second half. Nighthawks lead at 16-0. Back after this here on SWX. The WIAA Kickoff Classic Halftime Report here on SWX is brought to you by Inland Imaging, a proud sponsor of high school sports here on SWX. As you see some of the rolling hills of the Palouse here. A lot of farmland has been harvested. Some has not, though, as work continues. As you see the rolling hills here on the campus of Eastern Washington University in Cheney. The red turf is called the Inferno here as they get ready for the third year of the red turf at Roosefield at Eastern Washington University. Welcome back. It's our halftime show. Larry Ware with Bill Moose. Uh, Bill Moose. Bill Ames. Well, I'd, I'd like to be. Actually, I'm not sure I want to be him after after Thursday night, but in most cases, yeah. Bill Moose. Well, Moose and Roos and Ames and Bills. And you're thinking no, of cows. You're thinking of cows and you thought Moose, <laughs> Bill Moose. It's all right, Larry. Well, we had, yeah, Sean, yeah. we had Sean Amos, who was the head coach at, uh, <laughs> at uh, Coeur d'Alene last night, so I'm glad he didn't have Ames and Amos. And... Uh, you see Tika Oaksdale, they're there on the sidelines. These teams have not left the field here. Reardon has gone down into the shade behind the uh, grandstands. There you see them there uh, behind the end zone stands here at Roos Field. And Tika Oaksdale is over on their bench. 
The referees have taken a powder, though, so they want to get out of the sun and uh, go back into the locker room. And so uh, they're back there. The teams are on the field still, though. The cheerleaders are uh, on the field as well and performing for the fans. Football is not the only sport going on this weekend for the WIAA Kickoff Classic. We'll show you some volleyball coming up next after this break on SWX. The 2012 WIAA Football Classic uh, replacing the Emerald City Football Classic, which uh, has to take a year off because of the construction at Husky Stadium. And in conjunction with the Emerald City Football Classic, they'd have the Emerald City Volleyball Invitational as well. And so here in conjunction with the Kickoff Classic, we have a Volleyball Invitational as well going on at uh, uh, Eastern Washington University. Cheney taking on Newport in an early matchup. First set, Blackhawks up two and serving. Madison Risley there with the kill. That put Cheney up 13-10. to 10. Kinsey Pease serving for the Blackhawks. Cheney gets defensive here with the double block. Risley and Kendall Case providing the wall. 15-10 Cheney. Cheney goes on to win straight sets. 25-14. 25-19. Cheney over Newport. It was a nice finish to a slow start for the Blackhawks. Then across the court, Moses Lake was taking on Gonzaga Prep in the first set. Moses Lake's Karina Lefebvre with the nasty kill. That put the Chiefs up 18-10, but the Bullpups stormed back with their defense. Sarah Macklin right there with the block. That gave Prep the lead at 20-18. Set point, Hannah Payne with the kill down the line, and that uh, gave G Prep the set. They win in straight sets 25-21, 25-22. A good match to work out the kinks. plays but I don't know we really picked it up and pulled it together we have good energy this year we have kind of a way younger team I think um, our seniors have really stepped up a ton so we're just helping out we have like 10 new girls 10 younger girls all sophomores and juniors so we just need to keep helping them out and helping them get better at halftime of our games, we're going to be focusing on volleyball here as part of the uh, WIAA Kickoff Classic and the WIAA Volleyball Classic as well. 
Halftime, Tika Oaksdale taking on uh, Reardon here. 16 nothing Nighthawks. A beautiful summer, late summer day. I guess summer ends, as they say, uh, after the Labor Day weekend. We'll get a weather update from our SWX crew. We'll do that next. 16 nothing Nighthawks. Halftime at Roosefield and Cheney here on SWX.
73 yards rushing. If not for the 13 penalties in the first half, Larry, this thing could be uh, really out of hand. And uh, you know, we're unfortunate to only be down by two, two scores right now. SWX available on cable providers throughout eastern Washington and North Idaho. And if you are uh, have friends outside the area, well, tell them to go to the Internet, the WIAA website, WIAA.com. Uh, you can watch uh, all the games today, streaming uh, Internet. And so uh, if you've got uh, Grandma or Grandpa in uh, Poughkeepsie or something, you can get them on the other end of the phone line and uh, tell them to go to WIAA.com for all the action throughout the day here. First to four, we've got a 2A, 1A battle coming up between Colville and Freeman. Then a 3A game between East Valley of Yakima and the host team Cheney. And then a big 4A GSL game later tonight at 7 o'clock. Sparris taking on Central Valley. And uh, that should be just a huge matchup. We had a big 4A matchup last night in the GSL with Gonzaga Prep taking on Lewis and Clark as well. Getting the big ones out of the way early. You know, Gonzaga Prep, Lewis and Clark, Gonzaga showing some offensive Ooh. firepower at the 49 points. And, of course, Meade did what uh, everybody expected they would do, really blew out University. And uh, tonight is, is going to be another one of those key battles early on with a young, very young Ferris team, Jim Sharkey, hands full this year uh, with that squad, and then uh, Rick Jim Petrie. Uh, just always finding a ways to win. Reardon will get the opening kickoff here in the second half, and we're underway here from Roos Field. It'll be Eldred, and he goes down after catching that one. Might have gotten his turf car, his toe caught in the turf there, and he goes down at close to the 30-yard line, and that's where the Indians will start first down and 10. You know, kind of a small point here, Larry, but I've noticed with Reardon that they're giving a little bit more credit to these kickers of Tico Oaksdale than, than I think they ought to, both in the punting game and kicking. They've been playing those return guys back a little bit. Eldred had to run up on the, under that ball, and, and in doing so, uh, got himself tripped up. So they may want to bring it up about 5 or 10 yards, give him more of a chance to get a decent return. They operate out of the wishbone. Everybody in tight here on first down. Sorcy, the quarterback, will hand it off. And they'll get a couple or three yards on that play. As Eldred takes it to about the 33. You know, Reardon just doesn't look as fluid in the backfield as as you would expect. I mean, it's first game of the year, so there's going to be you know a little bit of jitters and maybe not uh, running things quite as smoothly. But just some of that action in the backfield, the timing just doesn't seem often or seems a little bit often. Certainly not to, to the same degree that we're seeing out of the Nighthawks, who have been really strong in the running game here in the first half, as you said, with over those 200 with over 200 yards of rushing. Yeah, with maybe so few practices and then uh, uh, with so many new guys, the timing just quite hasn't been established like it probably will once we get into the school year and routines get set, so forth, so on. Loss of about a yard on that play, so it's going to be third down and around nine yards to go. Yeah, a little bit more of the same for Reardon coming out and really just trying to establish that inside running game, that power running game, but Tico Oatesdale up to the challenge with you know some great play up front. We have not had a completed pass that is counted yet in this game. Tico Oaksdale, Roselia had one uh, completed pass, but it was wiped out by a penalty. And so neither squad has completed a pass here as we're at third and eight for Reardon at their own 32. They'll hand it off. And that's Eldred, I think, in the backfield. And he is swallowed up for a big loss. Number 22 for Tico Oaksdale, Clay Shelton. Or check that, number 82. My, my mistake, Max Mueller. Uh, they're on the stop, so uh, fourth down now for the uh, Nighthawks. We'll see it here, Bill. Well, you take a look at it again. It's just guys getting upfield. I mean, you've got uh, linemen for Reardon that are not putting any kind of contact on those defensive linemen, and your running backs have no chance if the guys up front aren't going to uh, get some kind of uh, some kind of hold on those uh, on those defensive players. Josh Rowe, number 77, also in there on that, picking up the punt at about the 31-yard line is the return man, and that's going to be about it for him as he is overrun at uh, right about the 31 or 32 yard line as that was uh, Maley once again Stephen Maley back there on the return so the Nighthawks will take over right around their own 31 yard line first down and 10 they get the three and out defensively and uh, here comes this uh, rushing uh, offense back out there averaging about uh, a little more than 11 yards per carry combined as a team in the first half well you know we talked a lot about the runners as we normally do we talk about the skill guys but I think 
you know, maybe more so than anything. And you saw a little bit of it on the first drive from Reardon. It's the guys up front who have really made the difference. And, you know, we see some of those same players out here on the offensive side now for Tico Oaksdale as Nelson's back at it again. He fumbled the ball, though, and I think Reardon may have it. Nelson with some great strong running that time, but at some point lost the ball. Somebody knocked it away, and the Indians have come up with it here. So they get the second turnover of the ball game. Another big cap, uh, play for Nelson, and, but we'll see it here on the replay, Bill, and we'll see if we can see who fumbled or who recovered it. Well, Nelson, again, just you know, doing some great things with, the, with some spin moves and getting out into the open field. Just got to tuck that ball away, and it really wasn't any kind of great contact. It was, uh, it was more the ball just kind of slipping out after... Might have been uh, Connor Johnson, number 70, or excuse me, Tyler Johnson, number 70 for Reardon, who may have just gotten a hand on him. And uh, kind of an unforced error there for Tico Oaksdale. So the Indians with it. Sorcy has nowhere to go with the ball, though, in the backfield. They'll be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage there on first down. Yeah, I really think Reardon's got to try to get this ball outside of the tackle box. You know, they just aren't having any success whatsoever trying to run this thing between the tackles regardless of, of what kind of a play it is. So, you know, if you're, uh, if you're the rear in the offense right now, I think you really have to seriously consider either through the pass or maybe the running game really testing the edges of, uh, of this Tico Oaksdale defense. Second down, a long 10 for the Indians. Early third quarter here, trailing by a couple of touchdowns. Again out of the wishbone. They're in the backfield with no wide receivers and flags are down. I think they took too much time. A rare penalty for uh, uh, the Indians. That's something Coach Nicola can be uh, pleased about. They've played a pretty clean game for the most part, just their second penalty for 10 yards. Yeah, but that's one that, you know, again, you got the ball inside, you know, in the other uh, other team's territory to start this drive, and, you know, you come out with a, with a play that gets you no yardage and then back it up with a penalty, and, and whatever momentum the fumble may have gotten you, uh, you know, you're, you're starting to lose it because of, uh, because of a silly penalty. Second and 15. And they want to pass. And they've got a catch. And that's the first completed pass of the game. Mac Chilson, the quarterback, and he throws it to Sorcy, who was the quarterback, who goes out to wide receiver there, and they got a uh, pickup of close to 10 yards. Well, you, you got to love Sorcy. I mean, this guy's doing it all. Here he goes. Chilson comes back. And, you know, nice job of, of get, keeping his eyes downfield and a nice easy toss. And, well, look at the footwork there out of Sorcy. This guy's been watching games on Saturdays and Sundays. And seeing guys uh, able to tiptoe that sideline, keeping the concentration on the football. Big play there for the offense. They got eight yards on that play, so it's third and seven now at the Nighthawk 44. They go back to the wishbone. Chilson's still the quarterback in there, though, and that play doesn't work as they get stopped back at the 46 for a loss of a couple more yards. Yeah, again, just, just really nothing going on in, in that inside running game. And, you know, Coach Nicola looks like he might bring the punting team out to... Uh, to try to pin Tico Oaksdale back a little bit and play a little field position here in the second half. Tico Oaksdale has controlled the line of scrimmage here in this ball game, and usually if you control the line of scrimmage, you're going to win the game. That's usually the case, absolutely. So here's Source. That's a nice punt. Over the head of the return man, it's going to hit inside the 10 and roll back into the end zone for a touchback. And so uh, the Nighthawks will take over at their 20-yard line. That was the best punt of the day for either side as Source put his foot into that one. And it's well over a 40-yard punt, but the Nighthawks will get the touchback and take over at their own 20, first down and 10. I think it'd be a little too much to ask that young man to try to, you know, sky punt one inside the 20 with all he's been doing. Uh, he's, uh, he's really carried this team on both sides of the ball, and uh, a nice punt there as well, just unlucky. Yeah, he's been all over the field. He's had, uh, uh, he had five tackles defensively with a sack in the first half of play. He's been the quarterback, caught the pass right there. There's another high snap, and they'll hand it off. And uh, here's Clay Shelton. He had a touchdown run there in the first half. And Shelton takes it out for about a three-yard gain there on first down. You know, it's hard for me to tell who's, uh, who's in there at center now for Tico Oaksdale. They had some issues with snap counts and, and getting, that, uh, getting those snaps taken care of. It looks like it might be, it might be the young man, Lucas Engel, who came in to replace the starting center, Jason Brown. And Engel uh, needs to get those snaps down just a little bit, throwing that timing of that offense. Nice snap there, though. Maley will throw a screen to Nelson. And he'll be stopped short of a first down. Nice job by Sorcy, number 12 there for Reardon in the red to make the tackle there on Nelson. They stop him short at the 29, a gain of six yards. Hard to tell who's the center, though, Bill, because uh, uh, Brown is 55 and Engel is 65. And you get those guys, you know, then the blind, they're getting their jerseys grabbed and everything starts to bunch up. So... 
Uh, but I think you're right. I think it is Engel, the sophomore, that's in there right now. First completed pass for the Nighthawks. And there's another fumble. And the Indians have it. They get their second turnover here in the second half on a fumble that time. A, a miss a handoff, it looked like. Maybe the quarterback's arm got hit, perhaps. And the ball's on the ground, and the Indians get another fumble recovery. Well, again, just another unforced error here by Tigo Oaksdale. Good snap. Looked like everything was okay. Just quarterback tried to pull that ball out of there. Mailey wasn't able to get it out of Shelton's uh, midsection area fast enough, and ball goes back over to Reardon. And I'll tell you, there's a Tico Oaksdale has uh, certainly provided Reardon with a lot of opportunities here in this football game. And so let's see if the Indians can take advantage here and dent the end zone. And so it's uh, going to be first and ten for the Indians. They have to get a new football in. That's what uh, uh, the delay is right there as we look at the Nighthawk bench. Micah Pitsley has come out of the game. And they'll get a substitute for him out on the field. And so it's first and ten. Sorcy, the quarterback, in behind center. They have three wide receivers and only one back in the backfield. Sorcy will pitch. Trying to get it outside. There's a fumble, and the Nighthawks get it right back at the 25-yard line. The pitch went to the running back, Bergeron, and he took a big hit, and the ball squirted loose. And Mueller, number 82, you see him there. Max Mueller, the returning starter, is on the defensive line, made the fumble recovery there at the 25-yard line. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Tico Oaksdale's been giving the ball away an awful lot here today, but in that case, boy, they just... They just, you're right, they took it right back with a big hit. You're going to see Bergeron off the pitch here come in. And it was just a big hit. Can't really make out the number of who, who was able to jar that thing loose. But a, a nice hit and right on the football, Nighthawks get it right back. And they try the pitch, and this is on the ground. Still loose. Three plays, I think, and three fumbles here. And Reardon gets it back at the 24-yard line. So it's turning into a little sloppy game here in the second half. Well, you might as well stay with the theme. You know, give it away, take it away. And that's what uh, Tico Oaksdale's doing is that, again, nothing that Reardon's really doing to uh, dislodge the ball. They just can't get, they just can't get their pitches figured out. And uh, right there, Reardon smartly jumped on it before the ball went out of bounds. So another great opportunity here for the Indians. So here are the Indians now at the Nighthawk 24. On first down and 10 is Reardon again trying to take advantage. Sorcy trying to get outside, can't really do it. Nice job by the Nighthawk defense to bring him down. A short gain, maybe got a yard there. It'll be second down and about nine yards to go. Sorcy, one of the just four seniors on this Indian team, seeing action on, he doesn't come off the field. He's on the kickoff team, the return teams, the punt teams defensively and offensively. Well, everything right now for the passing game anyway of Reardon, the few times they have passed it, they've tried to get it to the outside. You wonder if maybe the middle of the field that, you know, Tico Oaksdale really doesn't have a, a, a free safety back there playing in that back third. So you wonder if the Reardon coaches might try to take advantage of that with the passing game. Another penalty here, it looks like. Or nope, timeout taken. The Indians take a timeout here as Coach Nicola wants to talk it over with his team as they're still in this ball game here, 16 to nothing. We're at the midway point of the uh, third quarter, almost at the midway point. Six minutes, ten seconds remaining to play. And so the uh, Indians will talk about it, needing a touchdown to get back in this when they trail 16 nothing here on SWX.
the Reardon Indians down 16-0. They've had opportunities here in the third quarter to take advantage of some turnovers. They haven't been able to do so so far. Now they're in a situation of second and 10 at the Nighthawk 24-yard line. There you see the senior quarterback, Sorcy. Well, and here you've got the three wides to the bottom of your screen. Some of them not even in the screen. You wonder if quarterback draw or some kind of quick hitter up the middle trying to take advantage of spreading people out and they exactly what they do just uh, again not a lot of uh, not a lot of push with those offensive linemen and that quick hitter up the middle that bill called jeff bergeron the ball carrier there the junior 175 pounder he gets three yards out of it so it's third and seven and you are in four down territory here so if you can get four yards a pop you'll get a first down here now they go back to the wishbone Sorcy hands it to Eldred. He bounces off one tackler, but can't get very far after that. He got maybe a yard, but it looks like they'll put him down right back at the 21 again, so no gain. So now it's going to be fourth and seven for the Indians. And they just can't get anything going inside. Again, you're going to take a look at it. This is going to look awfully familiar to you. You just have guys getting off of blocks quickly, and if you're Reardon, those offensive linemen right now, they're just hitting and standing. They're not driving their feet. The only way you're going to be able to sustain a block if you're the Reardon Indians is to keep driving those feet at impact. If you stop moving your feet, that's when the line, uh, defensive line can easily come off and make plays, and that's what Tico Oaksdale is doing such a great job of right now. Number 10 in the replay there, Micah Pitsley of Tico Oaksdale Roselli making the stop. Now fourth and seven, Sorcy throwing and incomplete is the pass. Would have been short of a first down anyway. Actually, it was uh, a Chilton, a Chilson who uh, threw the ball, and Sorcy was the intended receiver. I think he may have come up with it, but it bounced in, and the pass incomplete. So again, Reardon unable to take advantage of the turnover. They turn it over themselves on downs at the 21-yard line. Yeah, just too many opportunities now deep in the Nighthawk territory for Reardon, and they've not taken advantage of it. And it, it's really for them offensively. That's what it's been about here tonight, not taking advantage of their opportunities. First down and 10. And again, a lot of misdirection. They get the handoff completed that time, but it's going to lose yardage. As again, they had a lot of crossbuck action going on in there, and finally the third guy ended up with a handoff. And it ends up being a loss of about three yards on that play. Stephen Maley, I believe, was thrown for the loss. Yeah, I'm not sure if it was Tyler Johnson or who it was, but they came in, came in on that left side of the Teak Oaksdale line right away and really disrupted things on that first down play and once again you see great penetration by Reardon and that's going to lead to a tackle for loss although we've got a flag on the play and one of the rare times that Nelson has been stopped for a loss in this one we'll see what the flag is all about we may have a hold here that would be my guess if it is you're going to have another decision if you're Eric Nicola whether you take this penalty or not because of the loss on the run you might consider just taking the down here and put him in uh in a third down situation. Yeah, it would be third and 15 if they decline the penalty. If they accept it, it would be second down and right around 20, a little over 20 yards to go, and they'll go ahead and as, do as we thought, decline the penalty, so it's third and 16. I think it was from about this spot on the field there in the, uh, in the first half where Nelson ripped off about a third and 15, one for 80 yards uh, down the right side of the field, so uh, be on the lookout for that once again. Yeah, that was 87. This would be 85 if he can make it happen. Third down. And they'll fake it to him. Maley will run, and he stopped for a loss. So three straight negative plays there. As a great job by the Reardon defense. You see big number 54 there, Ike Martinez, 190-pound senior, in on the stop there. So the Nighthawks go backwards. And again, this, this drive right now for the defensive Reardon was all about penetration. You see guys getting up into the defensive backfield, and that's how you disrupt an offense like, like the Nighthawks who'd like to try all that misdirection. So great job there by Reardon. You know, in most cases, Larry, the defense would come off the field and talk to the offense and say, guys, you got to get it going for us. Problem here is it's the same people. So they got to have a talk with themselves uh, and try to get things going on offense. A yeah, big number 70 for Reardon was Tyler Johnson. He helped out Martinez on that play, and the punt will roll dead at the 38-yard line. The second half has pretty much been played on the Tico Oaksdale end of the field, but their uh, defense has been able to hold Reardon out of the end zone. Uh, so far, but again, the Indians deep in Nighthawk territory at the 38-yard line to start this possession. Well, only 87 yards of total offense for Reardon right now, and, you know, their coaching staff isn't asking them to go much, much more than that to try to put points on the board, and they're going to start running out of time here pretty quickly, just over three minutes here in the third quarter, but uh, they got to they got to put something together. 
Sorcy, the quarterback. They try spreading the field. They don't have the uh, the wishbone in there. They have one halfback and the fullback still in there, but the other halfback is. Uh, moved off into a wide receiver position and Sorcy looks to do something there and there's just no room. The Nighthawks again controlling the line of scrimmage with that defensive line. A loss of a yard there for Sorcy. Yeah, it's just lack of execution right now. I mean, even with even trying to ride that fullback coming through, it just doesn't look very fluent and it's really making it easy on the defense when you have two potential ball carriers that are that close together. You know, you, what is there to read if you're a defensive lineman? Just tackle both of them. They're so close together. So second down and 11 for the Indians. Ball at the Nighthawk 39-yard line. And now they go back to the wishbone again. No wide receivers. Two tight ends in there. Eldred gets hauled down by the back of his jersey. A good play that time by Mueller, number 82 for the Nighthawks. And he stops him for another yard loss. And so they're back to the 40 now. It'll be third and 12. Yeah, it looked like it might have been a little bit of a horse collar there on that tackle. But still, nice job by the Nighthawks to get through. You can see there right away, great job by Mueller just to get off of that block of the lineman Marston and make that play. So great job getting upfield quickly. And, you know, this has turned into a bit of a defensive shootout. And we have another timeout taken here. This one taken by the Nighthawks. And so it'll be third down and 12 for Reardon. We saw a lot of football yesterday, Bill. Uh, SWX does a great job there on the, uh, on the Friday night lights. And uh, was there anything in particular that surprised you out of yesterday's action? Well, you know, I, I was a little surprised, to be honest, at Coeur d'Alene, the game that we had, uh, that, uh, that it was as easy for them as it, as it uh, ended up being. I mean, they just, they look so powerful once again. And, you know, elsewhere, I'm not sure that we saw too many surprises, Larry. I think the, you know, the prep LC game was as expected, a, a shootout, and could have gone either way. Meade dominated. Not much of a surprise there. So, you know, early on, I think everything's uh, really according to form. The one thing I was surprised with was Coeur d'Alene. I had not seen them in person before, and I was looking for a word to describe them yesterday. I'd say relentless because they play at a very fast pace. They play a lot of guys, suburbly conditioned team. Um, they're outstanding. Yeah, I mean, they're, I mean, I really thought that they were going to take a step back this year, and, and I had talked to a couple people over the summer who, who had talked to Sean Amos, and he, and he told them that, look, we're still going to be a very good team. We're young, but we're still very good, and you know, I had a hard time believing they were going to be as good as they were last year. Maybe they're not, but you look at them last night, I don't know who's going to beat them. I mean, that Skyline game in a couple of weeks is going to be, uh, be exciting. And so uh, away we go here, third down and 12, and Chilson back in there at quarterback again, and he throws, and it's overhead of the intended receiver, Bergeron, and so it'll bring up uh, fourth down. Well, boy, they had the right play call there. Bergeron was open long before the ball was thrown to him but uh, just couldn't connect, and uh, great opportunity there for Reardon to be able to, to, uh, to get a first down and a lot of yard is just, uh, again, uh, more of an execution issue than anything else. So fourth down and 12, and they'll go ahead and punt here and try to keep that uh, field position uh, going. And Sorcy will do the punting. A high kick, but he's not going to get a lot of distance out of it unless he gets a bounce, but it may hit. Yeah, um, did it hit the umpire? I'm not sure, and it bounces back, and it's killed at about the 37-yard line. So that's going to end up being about a two- or three-yard punt is all. So I don't know if it hit the umpire in the leg there and bounced back or uh, or what happened, but it ends up only being a two-yard punt, and so the Nighthawks take over at the 38. Yeah. Aero Machinery would like to take a moment to salute all of our student-athletes who are participating in tonight's game and would like to, get, uh, would like to encourage all students to just get involved. Aero Machinery for all of your farming needs. You know, Larry, I was going to say that uh, about the time that that ball was fielded by rear and Coach Eric Nicola put his hands on his head and he left them there for a good 45 seconds trying to figure out a way to, to get his team to uh, get some positive things happening. And one thing he could be proud of is this defense now has really responded and shut this running game down. It's I, By my count, it's been uh, probably no more than 10 yards of rushing for Tico Oaksdale here in the second half. So Reardon's figured something out here in the running game. They're just great penetration again, doing to, to, to uh, Tico Oaksdale what's been done to them for most for the most part of this game, just uh, really dominating the line of scrimmage. Rick Meserve was number 58. You saw him in there. Number 44, Charlie Eldred. You see him in your picture right there. They teamed up to blow that play up. Loss of four. It's second and 14 now. Nelson 
Got away from Meserve that time, but number 44 Eldred is there to finish him off, and yet another loss. I'm kind of wondering when the last gain we had in this ball game has been. These defenses are both uh, dominating right now. Well, Meserve did it once again. Didn't get the tackle, but he certainly should uh, get at least half a tackle there for slowing up Nelson and giving his guys a chance to come in and make a play. So nice job here by Meserve, and and again the defense for Reardon doing it once again. So third and 18 now for the Nighthawks. Back at the 30-yard line here. Ryan Maley, the quarterback, will hand it off. And here's a hole opening. It's uh, Stephen Maley, and he gets out over the 35-yard line and is close to the 40. He'll be well short of the first down. He picks up about nine yards on the play. But in all likelihood, the Nighthawks will punt with this uh, 16 to nothing lead as we near the end of quarter number three. Well, and the, and the bad punt by Reardon uh, kind of changes the field position game here. And, and uh, Tico Oaksdale, even though it is a three and out, has a chance here to, to reverse things a little bit and put Reardon in a much more difficult position. They've had trouble moving the ball just to get a first down, much less try to go the, the length of the field. And the Nighthawks let the quarter go down, and that's the end of three quarters of play. Here from Roos Field at Eastern Washington University in Cheney, the Tico Oaksdale Rosalia Nighthawks 16, the Reardon Indians nothing. Quarter number four is next here on SWX. Well, beautiful day here in Cheney as you see the red field, the Inferno at Roos Field in uh, Cheney. It will be uh, filled to capacity and then some in about uh, four weeks from today as the University of Montana will come calling here at Roos Field uh, against the Eagles for the Eastern's home opener in 2012. This place might be filled up a little bit more than we're seeing it today. You think for that game? I think there will be uh, people uh, <laughs> hanging off the rafters for that one. Hey, this punt is being brought to you by Kimmel Athletics. Stop in and see the latest in football shoes and equipment. Nobody deep for Reardon. They did not buy that there was going to be a punt there, and Tico Oaksdale is able to kill it down at the 32-yard line, and that's where the Indians will take over first down 10. In the first half of play, Tico Oaksdale Roselia had 19 rushes for 228 yards. In the third quarter, they had 10 for seven yards. Reardon had 24 carries for 81 yards in the first half. In the third quarter, 11 for minus four. And so neither team able to establish uh, a lot of offense here. Great defense being played in the third quarter. Yeah, 13 yards of total offense there for Tico Oaksdale in the third quarter, four for Reardon. I mean, that's uh, that's a defense figuring out at halftime. And, you know, I think Tico Oaksdale will be fine with that to continue because uh, they're, the, they're the team that's up by two scores. Reardon is a team that's got to figure out a way to get the ball down the field and, and probably do it you know, fairly quickly here with this drive so they don't feel like they're, uh, they're put in passing situations late in the game because that's certainly not uh, an area where they're strong. Three yards on that pickup there. So they're almost out of negative territory here in the second half. Second down and about seven here for the Indians. But they need a big play here. This is not a, uh, an offense that is, I mean, they don't have the time anymore to chug it down the field. There's a missed snap. That's not going to help the situation any. And uh, Reardon's going to be able to recover that fumble. 
Yeah, it's just a wasted play. And again, Eric Nicola watching him from up here. He's just he's not sure what to do. His hands are his hands are going through all kinds of motions right now, hoping to try to figure something out for his team. You know, he's not used to being in this position. That you know, the Reardon football teams are are usually are usually uh, teams that uh, don't make a lot of mistakes. That uh, usually can grind it out uh, running the football, and they just haven't figured out a way yet to be able to do it here on this early Saturday morning. Third and eight. This is Chilson. And this ball is intercepted on the deflection. Looking for Nicola downfield. It's picked off, and this is Maley. Stephen Maley trying to run clear across the field, and he'll be tackled right at the 40-yard line. And a reared in turnover. A couple of flags are down now here late, so we'll see what that's all about. But it looks like another Nighthawk interception. Well, you know, try to throw the football as we wait to see what these penalties are all about. If they came after the interception or, or perhaps uh, while that ball was in the air and Reardon still had possession, but they tried to throw it out there to Connor Nicola, the sophomore, but uh, not able to get it out far enough. And, and nice coverage, first of all, and the ball gets batted around for Teague Oaksdale to be able to p pick it off. Well, let's see if this is a post-possession or a post-interception foul or, or what. It's the illegal man downfield on uh, Reardon. An illegal contact on Tico Oaksdale. So it looks like uh, the interception is going to be wiped off the books. Well, I suppose it depends when that illegal contact took place, if it was while he was trying to run his route or if it was after the interception. And I, suspo I suppose we're going to get some kind of an idea here from our head referee. The ineligible on Reardon is declined and exactly what uh, what you were saying Bill that uh, the, the, the illegal block came after the interception and so it'll be a, a post possession foul and let's see if we see it here. Well you get the quarterback rolling out and anytime he's taking a lot of time to try to throw it those linemen get a little antsy they do get downfield and you can see here initially a really nice play there to keep the ball alive and then as you said Larry it was Stephen Maley who was able to get that interception and then try to get upfield and right there at the end Eldred coming in with a big hit and a tackle to finish the play but uh, once again Tico Oaksdale finding a way on defense to take the ball away from Reardon I think it was Brock Shelton who tipped it initially before uh, Maley was able to come up with the interception we have an injured Nighthawk now as that's the ball carrier Nelson who is uh, slow in getting up he's had a big game 179 yards coming into this quarter. He ripped off about eight more on that one. And uh, we'll hope that he just got the wind knocked out of him there. He may have fallen on the ball. That's, that's, uh, that's not something you want to see at any point. But certainly with a guy like Nelson, who's uh, done so much to carry your offense here today, and a lot of bodies on him. You might be right, Larry. He may have just gotten the wind knocked out of him because that ball, unfortunately, looks like he's going to get up and you know, get a little bit of air. But that is not a fun feeling oh. to... Uh, to uh, you know, that first 10 to 15 seconds <laughs> could be a little bit uh, anxious. So a pickup of eight yards on the play. Nelson off under his own power. He'll be back out there, I think, in a couple of plays probably. They'll give him a little bit of time off. He's one of the two-way starters for this team. Uh, they've got about seven or eight guys that go both ways here. They only have in the mid-20s somewhere of, of players on this Tico Oaksdale team, so a lot of guys have to do uh, a lot of duty. And both coaches got to be excited about the future of these programs we talked about it earlier so many so many underclassmen uh playing out here today you know they're looking forward to a good year this year as you see a big play there and i think that's reserve reserve again. once again he's figured something out here in the second half about how to get up field really carrying this defense but you know and in reserve is a junior as well so to my point a lot of young guys out here making plays for both teams loss of five on that one makes it a third and about nine situation as you'll see the penetration there by Missouri. he almost uh, got the handoff well i'll tell you the, the key to that is he's just watching the ball as soon as that ball snaps he's flying up field before the lineman can get to him here comes a screen with a lot of running room this is uh stephen maley He's got the first down across the 30 down to about the 26-yard line. That's going to be a 22-yard pickup on that little screen with all that pressure coming up the middle. It was just a matter of time before they got it outside, and they were able to do it, and they got a big play. Yeah, great job by the coaching staff to see that the pressure's coming up. Reardon is having a lot of success getting into the backfield. So how do you, how do you combat that? Well, a nice little screen to the outside, perfectly timed, 
and well thrown as well. That's the one thing that you like about that throw is he got it out into Maley's hands with a full steam of uh, momentum. Didn't have to slow up for it and try to regain his uh, re- regain anything and got a nice big gain out of it. Big play for the Nighthawks. Three men in the backfield. Not the wishbone formation, but a power eye is what they called it back in the old days. Now good to see Nelson back in there getting that carry. and You can see there that Rear not quite as anxious to fly upfield after that after that screen, and that's exactly what that play will do. It'll get you thinking now a little bit about about tr- getting upfield, and and there the Nighthawks able to take advantage of it with the run. These young men playing in a college facility, Bill. Uh, I know when I played, and I played at about this level, uh, we were just happy there was grass on the field and there wasn't cocklebirds and sagebrush. So. Uh, I mean, this has got to be special for these guys. Here's Maley with throw. He's got a man open and a sliding catch down inside the five-yard line, and that's going to be good for a first down as he got it to Brock Shelton. But it's got to be a lot of fun for these kids to play uh, play on this turf and the fact that it is the red turf, something uh, unique. I need somebody, first of all, to explain to me what a cockleberry is. Cockleburr. Cockleburr. Yeah. What is that? Well, it's like a, it's a burr. It's, it sticks and it's... You know, like a cactus or whatever, you know, it pokes you. I knew I was going to learn some things out here today. I wasn't sure that was going to be one of them, but I'm glad (laughs) I've uh, I've now. So you didn't grow up in a rural area back in the Stone Age like I did. I didn't. Well, I didn't. They probably have a different name for it now that we're in the 21st century. (laughs) (laughs) Sticker bushes. Sticker bush, that's right. (laughs) Well, I'll tell you what, one thing that uh, the Nighthawks have figured out now is after that screen pass and really softened up that rear defense, they're moving it well with the run and the pass. Second and goal now. They run out of the eye. Second man through is Nelson back in after knocking the wind out of him out of himself there on that uh, run, but he does not get his second touchdown of the game. Good job by the Indians to stop him short, and so it's going to be third down and goal from inside the one now. Yeah, nice job so far by Rear and a good stand to you know, uh, to keep uh, the big man from getting into the end zone, Nelson. And their backs up again. They really can't afford to give up any more points at this point. So uh, this is a big down, and I'm sure that if uh, if they if the Nighthawks don't get it. They'll go for it again on fourth. So big challenge here for the Indians. The two men in the backfield, the up man in the eye is Maley, Stephen Maley, number 33. The deep man is Nelson. They fumble the snap, though. And let's see who comes up with that one. Reardon says they have come up with it. And let's see, and they have. Wow, the Nighthawks with another crucial turnover down at the two-yard line and just an incompleted snap from the center to the quarterback. Boy, I mean, tell you what, it, it's, uh, it's really got to be frustrating for those Nighthawks to, to be as dominant as they have been and just to simply give the ball away. Just again, another simple exchange there between the center and the quarterback. And it oh, didn't look like a bad snap to me. Did the center of the quarterback maybe pull out a little soon? It looked like maybe he came out a little bit soon. But, you know, how many times have we seen Maley really directly behind center? He's been in the shotgun a yeah. lot. And sometimes, you know, you put him down in that situation in the goal line, it, he's not accustomed to it, and that's where you have some problems. Let's see what Reardon can do here as Sorcy is going to try to get outside. And a nice job there, a good speed. By the Nighthawks, they pull him down at the nine-yard line and saved a big gain. Sorcy gets eight, but Brock Shelton, number 88 there, you see him in the picture, was able to save a big gainer right there because if Sorcy could have gotten around him, it would have been a long run. I think so. I think Shelton, uh, I think Shelton knows that, that uh, he saved a, a potential touchdown from happening there. Great play by Shelton. A good play call there by Reardon. Again, getting the ball to the outside, that's where they've been able to chew up some yards. And there they go outside for Eldred. He's trying to pick his way into the defense there. He gets a yard up to the 10-yard line. It'll bring up third down and a yard now for the Indians. I think now the problem for Reardon is they've run that play a few times, and and Tico Oaksdale has figured it out. They've gotten a guy out on Elder. They know that he's their key runner. So when he's split out wide like that, you just get a body out there. It really makes it difficult for a lineman or any kind of blocker for Reardon to be able to get any kind of a sustained block. And that play really hasn't done much since the, we saw it in the first quarter. 16 carries, 43 yards in the ballgame so far for number 44, Eldred. Third down and a yard here for the Indians. 
And they run it into the middle and I think may have the first down. As the uh, fullback, Chilson, is able to dive in there. And I think he got the one that he needed. We'll see. I actually think Chilson, uh, had he kept his feet, he would have had a lot of room to run. And that's one of the things you teach those running backs is keep your hands on the ball, but you know, get those knees up and keep them driving. Uh, he went down, uh, I think, uh, a little too easily for the coach's liking, but may have been able to pick up this first down. We will see. They're going to bring the chains in for a measurement here. And the Nighthawks will go off the field to talk it over with their coaches there. Here as we await the measurement, the officials are given at the eyeball. We haven't seen the sticks yet as they're trying to get all that. They figured it out, but the, they're waiting for the guy out at the 11. So we got here to Eastern today. We see the red turf, and it took me a while, but then I re realized on the south end of the end zone, there's, there's a big structure that seems to be missing, and perhaps you can... Uh, Fill us in on, on that, Larry, and then what's happening out here at Eastern this year. Yeah, there's no scoreboard right now here at Eastern. Uh, there are just two little scoreboards that are in either end zone at this point in time, and they've got a, a big scoreboard project. You can see the hole in the ground out there. They've taken the old scoreboard out. That's uh, going up to Chewila High School, and it's going to be installed up there. There you see one of the small scoreboards that we have here. But they've got a big video board type thing that's coming in and should be done by the 17th of September. It's going to be a, a big, huge video screen and, and uh, uh, it, it's going to be quite a project there and it's going to go down there in that, uh, in that uh, south end zone and they're hoping to have it done by the 17th. The first game here is not till the 29th of September. Yeah, I, told Dave, I asked Dave Cook, the SID here at Eastern, when he expected to have it in. He said midnight of the 28th is <laughs> what he's hoping for so i'm sure they want to try to beat it by a few few days and that get to get a chance to plug it in and see if it works but i i've heard it's awfully nice it is going to be spectacular the indians did not get the first down there so it's fourth down in inches they take a time out to talk about it we'll see if they make it as when we come back here on swx This presentation of the WIAA Kickoff Classic is brought to you by Spokane Boys, your answer for all seasons. And there is a look at the uh, Freeman football team. And they are going to be uh, playing Colville here next. And I wonder if the coach is, uh, how excited he is to have his, uh, have his team eating nachos before they're going out on the field. Uh, we... Didn't get the full time out there. We missed the uh, play, but Reardon got their first down, and here's a throw and an interception, and we'll see if it's going to be a pick six as uh, this will be taken down to about the four-yard line. I think it was Tyler Hansen on the interception for the Nighthawks as they get the interception, and they almost got the six points out of it, but he stopped down at the four-yard line. The Indians on that fourth and inches got their first down out to the 15, and on the ensuing play, they get the uh, interception. Well, and actually, they had some men open here. Nice job by Sorcy to try to look men off, but uh, came back over the middle and didn't see Hanson, who came in from the opposite side and made a great play on defense. And so first down and goal to go for the Nighthawks, trying to put this one on ice. You see their lead and the time remaining in this one, just over four minutes here in the fourth quarter of action. So 
So first down and goal to go here. Maley, Brian Maley, the quarterback, will operate out of the shotgun formation, and they hand it off. And this is going to be the second touchdown of the ball game for Clay Shelton. Well, yeah, yeah, and, and Reardon, Larry, just, I think, uh, a little bit shell-shocked right now after that interception and so many chances. This defense, even though a lot of them are the same kids that play offense, you can only ask them to do so much, and they put forth such a great effort here in the second half. But you know, after a while, you just, uh, you, you just wonder if you, your offense is going to do anything for you, and, and uh, I think that's what we're seeing right now of this Reardon Indian defense. Good efficiency there for number 22, Shelton. He has three carries in the ball game, and two of them have gone for touchdowns. Yeah, they got a strong running game here. Do the Nighthawks uh, and and uh, a lot of speed. Uh, it'll, I think uh, teams are really going to struggle all year long playing against this offense. They're going to try to kick the point for the first time. Corey Brown to do that. And he uh, misses there, and so the PAT is no good, and it's a 22 to nothing ball game now in favor of Tico Wokesdale Roselia. We'll see uh, another look at the touchdown here, uh, Bill, as Shelton is able to uh, get it there on the fly sweep. And again, you just see guys from rear, and although a nice, nice hit there at the end by Sorcy, guys just not getting off blocks, and I think it's just a, a matter of them uh, kind of understanding that uh, it's just not their day today and, and not putting forth the effort on that uh, on that touchdown that uh, we've been seeing for most of this morning from the Ridden Indians. Nighthawks looking to challenge in the Southeast 2B this year. That's the league that has the defending 2B champion, Waitsburg Prescott. The Cardinals uh, look like they'll be a contender once again this year. DeSales is a traditional power out of uh, Walla Walla, and they got a big win over LaSalle of Yakima uh, yesterday. Uh, Dayton is usually a pretty good team from down in that uh, in that 2B league. They've got some uh, private schools in the Tri-Cities, the uh, Tri-Cities Prep and uh, uh, Liberty Christian that are usually pretty tough. So uh, we'll see uh, how Tico Oaksdale, it's kind of a funny thing that the Tico Oaksdale is in um, the northern part of Whitman County. Uh, Colfax is in the southern <coughs> part of Whitman County. Colfax plays in the northeast uh, league here, and Tico Oaksdale, which is the northern school, goes down and plays with the schools in the south. Well, and I'll tell you what, I mean, I, you grew up in it. You spent a little time talking about that. I've had a chance to see some of these teams play in their home field on a Friday night. There really is no better setting. No. I mean, you know, obviously college football games with the thousands of people you get at those games, those are a lot of fun. But, boy, seeing these young guys play on their home field, you know, what a joy that is. A great, great effort. And talking about great effort, Eldred, you know, doing it all on this kickoff, team, on this kickoff return, busting it up to the left side and uh, – Maybe a little slimmer of hope for the Reardon Indians. Yeah, Eldred's had a good game today. He's their leading rusher, and he gets a long kickoff return there down to the Nighthawk 44. And again, Reardon with another opportunity. They've played most of the uh, second half here in the Tico Oaksdale end of the field, but the Nighthawk defense has done an outstanding job to keep him out of the end zone so far. Yeah, I can't think of a series that hasn't started on you know in, in Tico Oaksdale ter territory for the Indians. They go out of the, shot, uh, out of the wishbone again. And this is Eldred. Ooh, if he could have kept his feet and split those defenders, he may have been uh, able to take it to the house. He was not quite able to do that as he slipped just a little bit, and it allowed just enough time for Stephen Maley, number 33, to come over and uh, jump on his back there and knock him down after a seven-yard gain. And Eldred's looking over at the coaching staff saying, hey, guys, I need a blow, but... It's tough luck. Stay out there. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think there's anybody out there, certainly nobody out there on the sideline that's going to be able to do it the way that he does. So he's gonna have to get a couple of deep breaths. Uh, although he's uh, he's having a hard time right now, and yeah, he can't get his breath right no. now. They may have to uh, get an injury timeout for this young man. And he's gonna come off under his own power. He just went. He's the guy that you know. He had a long run there on that kickoff return, and then he uh, another long run there. And again, these uh, guys maybe not. Uh, uh, uh you know, they're not used to playing here for a while. So you know, it's going to be a little while maybe to round into game shape still. Yeah, you hope he's okay. I think, uh, you know, it is hot out there. That's the yeah, one thing. Even though, too, yeah. even though it's early, it's uh, it's pretty warm. So, you know, you don't uh, you don't want to mess around too much with that. Another good run here, this time for a Reardon. It's Bergeron getting the carry, and he gets the first down, down to the 30-yard line. That's something to, to remember too, Bill, because this is turf. It's going to be a little hotter than grass. We're in the midpoint of the day, so... Uh, you know, it's, it's, kids need to stay hydrated here, and they're going to get him. You see him there with the water bottle, Eldred. He's uh, 
Going to get some fluids in him. Well, especially early in the year, you've, you've got that issue. Cramping could also be something that we're yeah. going to have to watch over the course of today because of the fact that it's hot and, and it is coming off that turf uh, as well. That, uh, that could be an issue for him. Here's a nice little run by uh, Chilson. He bounced off uh, one of the Nighthawks and is able to get it down to the 26-yard line for a gain of four. It'll be second and six. Ridden's n probably not going to win this ball game, but how important is it for them to get a score here and maybe get a little positive momentum going into next week? Well, I think it's big. I mean, I, they are missing a few kids uh, this week that, uh, that, that were not able to suit up and play, so it'll be good to get them back. But I think it's, it's going to really help their offense to – to know that they, they can get in the end zone against a good defense like this. And and uh, as Eric Nicholas said before the game, they're going to get better as each game goes on. A lot of sophomores out there, and they just need time to be able to gel together as I think Eldred gets yep. back in the game and gets another carry. And gets a first down down to the 20-yard line. So Eldred keeps uh, tacking on yards. That'll put him over 60 yards rushing in the ball game, plus some good return yards. And... Like a lot of the other kids in this game, he's uh, made some tackles. He's been out there defensively. He had eight tackles, two for loss, uh, as of a uh, earlier here in this quarter. So first and ten for the Indians down at the Nighthawk 20. Bergeron shakes one tackle and gets a couple of yards down near the 18-yard line. Got away from number 82, Max Mueller and uh, was able to get a couple of yards there, but the clock continues to run. Yeah, we talked about how well this front seven has played for Tico Oaksdale, and one of the reasons for that is, and, and this is really coaching and, and great discipline by these players, but they really stay in their spots. We talked about how Reardon early in this game got caught up watching the backfield of Tico Oaksdale, and they'd get out of position allowing for those long runs. We haven't seen that out of Tico Oaksdale. They've really kept held their position in their ground so that when a runner comes into the gap and you see it again there, there's always somebody there to meet them. And, of course, their finishing plays very nicely with the tackle. But, uh, you know, credit this Tico Oaksdale defense. There's a reason why Reardon has not been successful, uh, and it's because uh, they've just been outplayed. Yeah, the Nighthawks, uh, uh, they had a bunch of starters back from last year, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That counts offensive and defensive starters. So 11 guys back from last year's ball club that had a winning record at 5 and 4. And so uh, they uh, are going to be tough this year. We're going to see a gain of a couple or three yards there, so it'll set up a fourth down here. And uh, Reardon, I believe, takes their last time out. And uh, they will have a third down and about seven yards to go, a uh, fourth down rather, and seven yards to go situation here as they try to punch one into the end zone. And as you can see on the screen, down to 25 seconds remaining to play here in the ball game. Yeah, they're going to try to get something in the end zone. You said it's very important for them to be able to do that. And you know, even though this game's out of reach, you're, you're now getting ready for next week. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's probably a play that Coach Nicola is, uh, you know, wants his offense to run, maybe so they can see it and decide whether or not it's something they want to use in next week's game. And probably some kind of a pass, I imagine. See if perhaps the passing game become a more part of their offense. Uh, you know, I think the balance is always important, especially at the high school level. Uh, so, um, you know, I'm sure that they're not just going to take a knee on this. They're going to try to get after it and, uh, and score. This uh, won't be probably the last play of this ball game, but we will have a little break here in between games. We'll be going away uh, back to the uh, studios on SWX. We'll get uh, weather updates as well as uh, uh, some other things, and then we will uh, be back out here at 1 o'clock as you see uh, – some of the light blue jerseys of the Freeman Scotties. They'll be out there taking on the Colville Indians in what was a uh, battle of Northeast A schools last year, but this year Colville's moved up to the 2A ranks, and there you see the Indians all padded up and ready to come out onto the field and start working out here between games. All right, fourth down and seven here. Mac Chilson wants to throw, has some pressure, and this kind of throws one up for grabs, and it's picked off by... Maley, Ryan Maley gets the interception, and that's going to seal this one for the Nighthawks, and it was important for them to get the stop here. They want to get the shutout so that they, they're feeling good going into week number two. They're going to feel good anyway with the win, but they wanted to get that shutout. Well, I think maybe we've, uh, we've answered the question of whether that play is going to stay in the playbook for, for Reardon, uh, just trying to get the ball downfield. And, you know, Sorcy doesn't have that strong of an arm to be able to get it down there. And you're right, the Nighthawks, they had something to play for as well. They, they, they'd love to be able to finish this game with a shutout, and it looks like they will. The Nighthawks hold uh, Reardon in the ball game to just over 100 yards of offense. 
Reardon ended up with 128 yards. The Nighthawks at 293. They put the knee down. The best play in football right there. If you're the team ahead, that quarterback knee down. And that's going to run out the clock. And so the Nighthawks get the victory. Tika Wokesdale Rosalia goes to 1-0 on the season. Reardon falls to 0-1 with play continuing here as this is game number one of the 2012 season. Uh, Craig Nelson had 194 yards and a touchdown rushing. Clay Shelton had two touchdowns rushing for Tika Wokesdale. And again, they uh, hold uh, Reardon to 128 yards of offense in the ball game and they uh, forced several turnovers as we had uh, uh, quite a turnover ball game here. Uh, but the Nighthawks get the victory. The players will shake hands here in the center of the field and that will do it for game one of the WIAA Kickoff Classic. We'll take a little break until about one o'clock when we come back for Colville taking on Freeman. That's coming up next here on the Kickoff. For uh, watching here for uh, Bill Ames, I'm Larry Weir. Game number two coming up in about 45 minutes.